Greetings everyone, my name is Etterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Mega Man Maker. During the last part, I covered a few more levels that were submitted to the Wally Construction Corp's Level Design Challenge. So in this part, I'll be covering at least 4 or 5 more Veerasmed levels, starting out with this one. Wily Tunnels by Nicol Assey. With 294 plays and an impressive score of 156. As always, if you want one of her levels to be featured in a future part like this one, please leave both the level name and level ID either in the comment section below or direct message me on Twitter. Also as always, the full disclaimer of this entire LP series is linked in the description below. Also in the description are the timestamps for all the levels that I cover in these parts. So if you want to check if her level is covered, expand the description. So we're definitely in for a good time with this stage. All of Nicolas's stages are pretty good. They all have a pretty good introduction to gimmicks and enemies. Introducing us to the fact that the jet bombs can block the force beams. There is also a harder version of this stage that Nicolas made, and I will play through it in the near future. Probably after 3 or 4 more Veer's Made Levels episodes. The Ring Boomerang is probably Napalm Man's weakness at the end of this stage. Now introducing us to the fact that the push blocks can also block the lasers. I gotta say, this is a neat gimmick combination, I do approve. Not many stages take advantage of certain gimmicks blocking lasers. And this blocking gimmick is made more dynamic with the usage of jet bombs and the footholders. Good checkpoint placement, and thank you for the full restore at every checkpoint. Time to face off against Napalm Man. I wonder how more difficult the hard version of this level is going to be. This was definitely a solid level, and it deserves a high score. Second level on the lineup is Mega Boy Series Green Man by Rolling in the Dough, 
with 6 plays and a score negative 3. This is going to be a super short level. You know, this challenge is a bit neat. I just wish I had access to charge shots. But the stage was short enough anyways. And there aren't any spikes down here anyways, so this boss fight is a cinch. If this was a different boss like Ferriman or Napalm Man, or a boss that jumps around, this would be a lot more difficult. But Toad Man is very predictable. Third level on the lineup is Closing Up the Waterfall Aquarium by Peak Gamer, with 38 plays and a score of 9. Getting through all these levels pretty quickly. I may even be able to cover 7 levels in this episode. Don't count on it though, as I expect the 6th level to be rather difficult. Can I get up there? No, I can't. Unless I can lure something down over here. Yes, we go down this water chute, the waterfall that is. All sorts of enemies to the right, and for some reason the rabbot just clipped into the terrain. Hot dogs underwater. I would expect it to find a squid on here. Then again, this level was made in version 1.1 or 1.2 of Mega Man Maker, so squid ons weren't part of the engine yet. The only mini boss present there were the hot dogs. One of the more classic ones. Time to face off against Toad Man. Once again, if this was made in a later version, I'd probably face off against Bubble Man instead. Wow, so close. If I didn't take that hit earlier. I 
I think it's too risky to do it that way. I'll do it this way instead. If those spikes didn't exist, or the ceiling wasn't as low, I would have used it instead. Ice Slasher deals a fair amount of damage, so I'll use that instead. So this stage existed. Fourth level on the lineup is No Hit Treble Kaizo, Please Don't Pick Up Held by Phantom, with 13 plays and a score of negative 8. First, I'll showcase getting the secret exit of the level. Jump up over here, run to the right, and you'll collect the off-screen energy element. Now, I won't be able to complete the rest of the stage legitimately, so I'll showcase the rest of it using the level editor. I tried repeatedly to get past this segment, but it's just too difficult for me. This is one of the harder Kaiser levels, I'd say. After all, you start with just 1 HP, and almost everything is instant dead here. Unless you're lucky and get a life pickup. Thankfully the stage isn't that long though. In terms of screen count that is. Only about... 10 screens long. At least. And good luck with this boss fight as well. So my apologies Phantom. I will not be able to pull this one off. Fifth level on the lineup is... A Night to the Factory Absolute Gear Run Remastered by a Boss 193 with 14 plays and a score negative 1. I played the original Absolute Gear Run before, but it didn't really appeal to me. So let's see how this fares in comparison. A bit of a close shave over there. Invisible ceiling, by the way. I remember this segment causing a lot of grief during my original run, as I used the time slow quite a bit, and that messed up how far the punch blocks could go. Yeah, I'm not getting that E-Tank. Just a minor loss. You know what, let me try it out again. Uh... Well, that didn't work at all. Let's try it again. I'll give it one more go and then proceed onwards normally. There we go. Very straightforward, actually. Thank you for the checkpoint right at the beginning of this segment. Let's see how many times I die in this section. During my original run, I died probably five times. So let's bypass it in its entirety. Checkpoint placement of this stage is rather generous. And honestly, I think I like this stage more than the original so far. A lot more smoothly done.
We don't even need these Yoku blocks. I have access to Charge Kick. And I'd say that this stage is easier compared to before. We don't have any instances of gyres after all. Still, I'd say it's kind of a forgettable level, but it has a better difficulty curve, and the fortress challenges feel a bit better. Checkpoint placement is a lot more generous, I don't think it's really necessary. Though I wouldn't say that this stage deserves a negative score like the previous one was, it wasn't frustrating in the slightest. Sixth level on the lineup is Oka Blocks Mega Man 11 Remix by Okada Man II with 25 plays and a score of 0. This was a level I was referring to earlier that I was a bit worried about. Many of Okada Man's levels can be quite punishing. So far, so good. That's super generous of Okada Man. But that also makes me rather worried. That went more poorly than what I wanted.
Even more generous. Thank you, Okada Man. So far, the stage is on the a lot more tame side. For now, at least. Who knows how difficult it's going to be near the end. Better safe than sorry. I didn't mean to use that. This stage's main gimmicks are blocks, essentially. That's rather tolerant there. Tolerant, at least, under my eyes, considering how much I screwed up there. Meanwhile, I screwed up over here. Plus, I can make all these challenges easier by using the time slow. I think you can do this entire section buster only, but it's super risky. You really need to nail down the timing. What's over here? Nothing. This reminds me of one section in Blockman's level in Mega Man 11. I need to slow down time here. Darn, didn't make it anyways. Oh well, checkpoints at the beginning of this room.
There we go, second time's a charm. Compared to all the other stages by Okada Man I played throughout this LP, this one is the most generous in terms of checkpoint placement and pickups. By far. Let's try it again. I need that block. I was mashing a jump on there. Uh, Should have played it safer. Here we are at the end of this level. Wow, in total this stage took over 15 minutes to complete. That's different. I need to get to the right of the level in order to get them into the teleporter. Essentially I need to find a key. Every time that Stone Man slams down, he, he keeps summoning in new enemies. Now I need to get back in one piece. That was all my fault, I should have used it again. In fact, the safer option is to repeatedly use the time slow. Those are a lot of missiles. You're forced to use time slow over here in order to overcome this conveyor belt. Fine with me, it asks for the challenge. And now we fight off against Stone Man himself. But I see all those bomb droppers. Sadly, no E tanks or M tanks. I knew that was gonna happen once. Let's try this again. Round 2 against Stone Man. I died 7 times off screen due to inconsistencies with the engine. I wish this stage had an E tank. 
or an M tank, it'd make this fight so much easier. Not just the fight, but the encounter before it. At last, this stage is done. If this stage acted more consistently at the end, this would have been done at least 5 or 6 minutes ago. I'll edit out most of the failures off screen. Nevertheless, I'll still give it a thumbs up. The only hard part of the stage was near the end, or at the end during the boss encounter. But the only reason for that was engine issues. Seventh level on the lineup is Clock Tower by Buster2, with 32 plays and a score of 10. Depending on how difficult this level is, I may or may not be sawn throughout the majority of this level. Oh, that's super generous. This is looking to be more of a traditional fortress level. No special weapon challenges here. Just classic Mega Man action, jumping, shooting, and sliding. And lots of spikes, as this is a buster stage. Shoot a slid off there. Oh well, at least the challenge progression here is on point. Starting off easier than getting more difficult. Good, there's a checkpoint after that section. Although many other stages wouldn't actually put a checkpoint here, they'd place it about 5 screens further away. I knew there was going to be a secret here. Some of these crash lift setups reminds me of Lepatio's level that I played through during the last Rear Submit Levels episode. Though it's a lot easier, no engine issues at all.
I need to stay on top of these platforms as long as possible before the bottom one comes down here. And yet I randomly die because I nicked the side of that spike. Ah, hitboxes. It was only a few screens away anyway. Only about a minute's walk back. 45 seconds more like. Still it's a neat challenge. And these upper crash lifts never get desynced either, so it isn't too bad. You just need to jump on top of at least four of them and I failed it so I need to wait for it. There we go. Now we face off against the boss. Double Magnet Man. Well, this is certainly unique. I never faced off against two Magnet Men at a time. Whenever he does this attack, it's a lot easier to dodge. Somehow I dodged most of those magnet missile attacks. That was very lucky. But I'd say that this was an above average traditional fortress stage. So I'll give it a thumbs up. Looking at the title, I was half expecting this to be another challenge level focused on a special weapon, or base's mobility, but nope, this was a classic fortress stage, using only the base abilities Mega Man has access to. So overall, out of the 7 levels I played throughout this episode, my favorite level would definitely be Wily Tunnels by Nickel Assay, with an honorable mention going to Oka Block Mega Man 11 Remix by Okada Man. As outside the ending, it was very straightforward and fun, and not too difficult. At least for me. So in the next part, I'll be covering a few more levels that were submitted to the Wily Construction Corps Level Design Challenge. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day. Toodles!